Why, hello, everybody. We have a little bit of technical difficulties going on at the moment, but I hope you are all having a nice and wonderful time today. We are back into our wonderful little world of dice of the damned. We have, of course, our wonderful, beautiful group joining me today. Playing Willow, we have Prophecy. Hello. Playing Volwyn, we have Necromantic Chef. It's a pleasure. Playing Nox, we have Sorrow. Evening. Playing Juliet, we have Primordial Kitty. Howdy. And playing Anthrodex, we have Kitsune the Dragon. Well, hello. And last we left off. Actually, before we go on here, Prim, are you doing okay over there? Is everything kind of coming back okay, or you need a sec? Oh, no, I'm fine. It, his computer is weird. That's okay. all. I'm adjusting. <laughs> You're getting uh, roll 20 up? Yeah. Okay. I the, regret buying, buying his keycaps now. The wire, is it a little too much? They're, they're the naughty ones. And I need the litters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's a Hold on, what? <laughs> That's a way to start an episode. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I, I'm so confused yet intrigued. There, there's some, uh, some, uh, naughty, naughty keycaps. Are they like instead of keyca keycaps or something? Huh? Or yeah. Ahiyo. Yeah. Oh, okay, I, I know what they are. I know what they are now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ahiyo. Ah oh man. Okay. So. Last we met, our party went for a bit of a rough ride through the seas. Getting on in Daggerford and finding their way instead down through the open sea and into some mysterious fog. That fog, in turn, as they crashed and crumbled and fell off in their own ways, led them to the middle of a forest. They've been transported. And with that, They all met back up, hearing howls and groans of pain through the murky, foggy woods. They found themselves to a path, up that path they found an abandoned old town, houses boarded up, the crying of a child and two children asking for help. Of course, our party being the magnanimous heroes that they are, decided to help out the two children by going into this house to try to save the child and their parents. The little baby child and the parents from the monster that's in the basement. Going through this house, they've kind of seen a few things that are off. Iconography hidden and weaved in between each of the art pieces along the walls. And on the third floor, they had found themselves beset by a animated armor. And after a couple of harrowing smashes against 
face and kind of clawing themselves through this fight tooth and nail magic and sword they finally hear the last bit of armor clatter and clang and fall to the floor as volwyn was starting to pick himself up dust himself off he hears from the room to his left the crying of a baby all right <clears throat> so through that door that it, you had kind of opened you do see and you kind of approach this crib that has been covered in a uh, black satin cloth. So I'm walk I walk into the room. I want to just peek inside before doing anything drastic. Okay. Uh, are you like just looking into that room? Or like well, just around the room? Well, looking into the into the crib. Into the crib, okay. Yeah. So, like, getting up to the crib, and because it's right now, it is, uh, it has a hanging black shroud of satin, kind of going over it. Um. So you'd have to get close and part the shroud to see what's inside. I go to the I go to the bottom end of it. Just pinch the cloth slightly. Just pull it up a little bit see what's inside okay you do see a tightly wrapped baby sized bundle just laying there in the middle of the crib and as you do so you hear a haunting scream echo throughout the room and the room behind you as that and as you turn to look, a ghostly figure of a thin nursemaid, her face hollow and angry. I don't know about you, my fluffy friend outside the door. But I don't think that's very friendly. Roll initiative. <laughs> oh, <look. laughs> just got out. Don't forget to click your pog. Yeah, please click yeah, your pog. Click your pog. Uh, and then roll your initiative. Mm. Oh, what a wonderful way to start off. Like you guys ended on combat and here we are. What a wonderful Round little two. time. Electro <laughs> Round two. Fight. The game requires its blood sacrifice. I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Oh, no. Go into I'm, looking at, I'm looking at the initiative. I'm gonna die. <laughs> go into the haunted house, they said. Go help the children, they said. It would be great for morale, they said. <laughs> I think only one we are waiting on is um what is this what is this <laughs> uh we are waiting on uh anthrodex uh oh shit hang on yeah <laughs> i know for something up <laughs> yeah so uh click your pog uh open your character sheet and then click the okay. initiative button <laughs> There we go. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Sorry. You're good. Okay. So. I just got out of combat. <laughs> <laughs> you you kind of like, um, Volwyn, you kind of like turn and you see this and you, you let, <laughs> you let Nox know like, hey. Essentially, you give that you give the off those kind of final words before the specter rushes. 
And the first thing there, the first thing in its way, is going to be Nox. All right. Oh, no. Uh, the whippy, the whippy, the whippy. 22 to hit. I got whammy. Uh, so you take... It, if it, it's higher than four, I'm down. Yeah, so it, it reaches out and grasps your shoulders like the moment that you turn around and it you feel this cold sink down through your bones... And you immediately start to fade in consciousness. I need you to roll me a constitution saving throw. Oh, I should be good at those. Keep her being sh Oh, no, I'm not playing. Fuck. I'm going to get fucked here. Uh, it's a nine. All right. So your health total is reduced by eight necrotic damage and you fall unconscious at zero hp just just watching the doorway oh shit <laughs> well when it's your turn you were you were the you were the bronze and beef of this party <laughs> <laughs> all right all right i see mr fluffy go down and i cast voracious void like right behind right behind the specter okay all right and uh do i just do i just click that in chat yeah yeah collect there just hit okay. that yeah that way it doesn't oh. well, why are you why you're not doing there we go that way Ooh. it's not hitting it's not hitting the um it's not hitting our friend here okay so uh since you're on the point to the ground you can see within 60 feet it has yep. a domain of influence of five feet beyond its own radius it lasts for one minute until your concentration is broken okay it is difficult to rain for all creatures except you and when the sphere appears at the start of each of your turns until the ability ends, unsecured objects within the domain of influence uh, are pulled towards the center, ending in an unoccupied space as close as the center as possible. Uh, you can choose a creature within the domain of influence of the black hole, increasing the pull of gravity around them. They must succeed on a saving throw against your spell save DC or be pulled straight towards the sphere center, ending in an unoccupied space as close to the center as possible. The creature that enters the black hole for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there takes 1d6 magic bludgeoning damage, and its speed is halved. Okay. Uh, and that's a action? No, oh, it's as a bonus action. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. I just want to get that like right out the way so it doesn't so it doesn't hit uh so it doesn't hit Nox. Okay, and and you choose the specter as the right target. Right behind the specter. Right behind the specter. Otherwise, I'm going to be pulling Nox into that as well and he can't really um Okay, you've got your little black hole right here. Yep. Right uh there. and then can you roll me 1d6? Let's see right there 1d6. Uh, what is your spell save, DC? Uh, spell save, ba 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 ba, 13. Save, strength. Yeah, that was... That, that was not... That was not, not getting through that. All right, it is pulled all the way into the sphere of influence. And you can see part of the actual, like, specter start to fade into the black hole for a moment. So that was your bonus action. What would you like to do as your action? So I want to leave this child right here. Uh -huh. I'm running out of the room. And is it possible to pick up Nox for a half, uh, half speed? Uh, so, like, picking, up, picking him up in your arms? It's Picking him up and bringing him with me out the door. Uh, Can your frail ass pick me up, though? 
how how much does Nox weigh plus all of his armor? Just shy of 140 pounds. And this is dead weight. Uh, 140 pounds with your armor or without your armor? With. Okay, so you're pretty light normally. Uh, normal, yeah. Okay. Uh, so your character's pretty, yeah. your character's pretty light, but the armor and everything on you is not. So, uh, I'll uh, try dragging him across <laughs> the, across the floor. Yeah, you can, you, you try to pick him up, you <laughs> okay, can't do that. <laughs> so you can drag him at half speed across the floor. Which way are you dragging him? Okay, going out the door and bringing him back with the party. Okay. Just, just like right here. So he's like right there. Okay. So he's just like right, right, right there. Right. There okay, we go. Shut the door, right? Shut the door, right? Shut the door. Hey, no metagaming. You're dead. <laughs> or you're down. <laughs> Speaking of down. Nox, give me a death saving throw. Oh no. Okay. That is one save. I I have to change the name of your character on here because you come up as Z's character. <laughs> Willow. No, Z comes I up as Z's you? character. Yeah, hold on. Uh, but Willow. I, I think it's just the... Uh, I got it. I think it's just the, the token, maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll fix that. I don't know why it comes up as a Z's character. Or maybe, oh, uh, name. Save settings. Did you, did you get the full name? Willow. No. Why won't it take the whole name of Willow? Hold on. Cancel. Open it this way. Take that name. Edit token properties. Save settings. Save character. And then for this one, because it's just the old one, save settings. There we go. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Willow, so you move upwards. And what are you doing here? Um, I'm about to cast Cure Wounds. Okay. All right. You heal him for all three HP that he has. Oh, fuck. I forgot that's how that works. So, um, Nox, you are <gasps> given life once more. You feel weak and frail, though, as you feel the kind of cold still within your bones. So, so cold. And I'm like shivering in place. Anthrodex. Yes. It is your turn. Am I still raging from the last battle? No, because it was, uh, you have to keep hitting things to keep raging. Ah. Okay. What can I, so, are we still fighting the ghosty thing? Yeah, so you heard kind of this yeah, or you heard the screech of the specter. Uh, you heard Nox essentially let out a gasp and a clank of all of his armor as he hit the floor. And then you saw Volwyn dragging Nox's unconscious body out into the hallway before Willow comes up, presses down on him with a cure wounds and revives him. That all just happened. Yeah, I don't have anything that's good against ghosties, do I? Uh, you're not entirely sure. Yeah, no. Uh, you, you also don't really know what's in this room. Don't want that they to find were, out. <laughs> um. But yeah, you're not entirely sure if it, uh, 
would work or not. I sit here and watch as Volman is dragging Nox literally out of this room. I pictured it by his tail. I am sorry. Um. <laughs> My tail. <laughs> My tail. <laughs> Just look at just what looking up from his just looking up from his body as he's finally resuscitated. Yeah, we're leaving the child. I'm sitting here. I'm looking between <laughs> no. the door where they just came out. And I'm looking at Nox. It's like, I I do not wish to be dead like that. Let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> why, why are we le leaving the ch ch child? It's obvious that the ghost is protecting the child. Why is not for us to find out? But if you treasure your fur, skin, and scales, we need to get the fuck out of here. Like, this is the first time that Anthrodex is actually showing fear. They're... As much as they want to save the child, they realize that, A, they're below half health. B, it's probably best to just fucking bail. If that makes sense. So, like, you're starting to kind of freak out and, and panic a little? Uh-huh. Okay. There's a whole lot of fuck no, I'm out. All right. Give me a wisdom saving throw, then. There, there's a throw. I was waiting for it. I have no wisdom. Well, did that do anything? So that fear and panic starts to actually take over a little as uh, it really kind of hits you. And I would like you to roll me a d10. Do I just type roll d10 in the chat thing? Yeah, that works. Like slash roll d10. See if I do this right. Ah, fuck. Okay. There's Again. also the little, uh, if you go all the way to the left side, there's a little dice option. I didn't see that. And you can just kind of bring that up. And... All right. That worked. So the fear, while it has kind of sunk in and you are starting to panic, you have full control over your faculties still. You're able to actually decide what you do for the rest of this turn. So do you start to run? Do you take I up against just... that fear or what do you do? Um, I want to get away from the door. Okay. So can I move to like the space behind Volwin? You might be able to kind of squeeze past him. Yeah. Eh. Yep, there we go. I'm happy with that. <laughs> Rest assured, you won't get any uh, protection behind me. It's not protection I'm looking for. I'm looking for an exit. Well, there is the stairs or the door behind you. That was only 10 of your movement. Oh, I know. Um. Yeah, me. 10, 11. Each square is like 5, right? Yeah. 5, 10, you're at 15. Do I dare open the door? Dare. Dare. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to open the door. Fuck it. Okay, click it. I clicked it. I'm just going to... There we go. Is this like a bathroom? Yep, you actually find yourself... Uh, in a dark room containing a wooden tub with clawed feet, small iron stove with a kettle resting atop it, and a barrel under a spigot in the east wall. The plumbing here does not seem to work. Hmm. I'm just going to hang here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Juliet, it's your turn now. Hold on, hold on. Are we really leaving that baby with that thing in that room? 
Yes. Uh, no, I'm not. Finally, someone with some sense. And I... Wait, which room was it? This one. Um, hmm, okay. So... I'm going to move there. Okay. You you would be able to kind of open the door and go around uh, the prone body of Nox. Sure. Let's do that instead. So, wait. Ah, let me zoom out. I'm too close. Too, too close. D enhance. There you go. Ta-da. Okay. 5, 10, 15 is what you've moved so far. My speed is 25. So where's the spooky ghosty? Good question. <laughs> I don't like that answer. <laughs> so uh, You do not see it? Now you should be okay. able to see it. I found the spooky ghosty. And cool. uh, where that spooky ghosty is... Um, small little books and debris have been kind of pulled toward the center of this small dark hole, as well as the spooky ghosty itself seems to be being sucked into the small hole. Well, all right then. Um... Do I hear the baby at all? Is it still crying? No, you don't hear it. But the baby's not in this room. No, uh, you do see, like, you see to your left the specter, and then to your right, you see in here there is a crib that is covered by uh, black satin uh, cloth that oh, is it, kind of hanging over it. That door is open. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have enough s to move into that room, do I? Uh, how, what's your movement speed? 25. You'd be able to step into the room or step closer to the specter. You wouldn't be able to do anything else. Or you, uh, wouldn't, no. you wouldn't have any more movement unless you used the dash action. I don't know. But you'd be close enough to, say, interact with the crib here. Okay. Um, is there any uh signs of life? And I can't think of a better way to say that. Um, like you did hear the crying earlier, uh, from this part of the uh bedroom, but you don't like see anything. You'd have to be. You'd actually have to pull back. Uh. The, like satin covering. Okay, I'm just the satin shroud. You'd why. have to kind of pull back away from it uh, to be able to okay. see into the uh, crib here. Okay, I don't know why, but I'm like expecting a jump scare <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's do that. Okay, you pull it back, and you do see, uh. This really tightly wrapped baby sized bundle that's kind of lying in the crib. Okay. Can I take said bundle? Yeah. Okay. Yay. So you grab the bundle? Yep. Okay. You pick up the bundle. This is a terrible idea. But I'm going to take the baby. Okay. Uh, you do still have your action. I'll count that all as like a an interaction so you be able to kind of do those okay. um. but you now have a uh you have a baby bundle in your arm okay so if you'd be holding like a shield or something that would be on your back instead uh 
I don't have a shield. No? Just the weapon? Nope. Okay. Just my pumpkin mace and my dagger. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, anything I'm you good. would like to do with your action? Uh, no. Okay. Not really. Then it is the specter's turn. And it is going to use its turn to uh, move up to you, even through that uh, really slow kind of, uh, what is it called? The like hindered movement through of the pulling of the black hole. And uh, it reaches out to you. Fuck. But as it reaches out, you kind of recoil back and you can see that the pulling of the black hole was a little bit too much for this thing. So it was unable to actually cause contact to your flesh at all. Hey, I'll take it. <laughs> okay. Well, when it is your turn. Brad, I thought I had kept it there. Um, so it's so it's broken out then, right? What do you mean? Oh yeah, it's broken out of the uh, uh of the black hole. Yeah, that has. All right. While it's coming around the corner, I'm readying myself for another Eldritch blast. Okay. Straight at the face. All right. Roll that attack. Wait, why isn't that? <sighs> It should be on the core of your character. Oh, right there. I was looking. I was looking on spells. Where to? There we go. Yeah. Oh That's... yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you with that uh, with that dirty twenty, you smash it mm. in the face with an eldritch blast. We'll roll that damage. <laughs> hey yo! Beautiful. It. You <laughs> see a large chunk of its incorporeal form get blasted away and the head kind of goes away for a minute and then starts to reform but it takes a while like for it to fully reform it is much slower than it was before its form kind of oh whoops its form kind of wavers uh as that attack had sunk through it and then scorched the wall behind it I'm just, I'm just looking my at my hands in an amazement. Well then, I'm just gonna back up a little bit towards the <laughs> towards the wall. <laughs> I better not be on a test because I don't think I'll I can do that again. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, with you kind of backing up out of the way and that wonderful Eldritch blast going off, Nox, it is your turn. Sorry, I was dealing with the kids. Oh, okay. You're good. You're good. I was getting out. The writer was bashing something on the floor, and I'm like, I can hear it over my headphones. Stop. Oh, no. <laughs> the kid's going wild. Well, there should be in bed. Um, also, may have gone through the kid's candy because daddy tax. Anyway. Um... <laughs> I am cold. Yes. Your... Mode. I want nothing to fucking do with this thing right now. <laughs> so you get up and kind of move back away from it? I'm kind of like scooting back, like on the, like, sca not like scared, scared, but like, get me the fuck back, uh -huh. skittering back. Okay. Uh, do you get up at all? Or do you like kind of stay on your butt? Probably when I bump into fucking, uh, Volwin. Volwin. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll use the rest of my movement to stand up. Got it. Okay. Uh, with that, do you want to use any actions or anything? Uh, what do I got here? What do I got here? Oh, yeah, I didn't. 
take the javelins. Uh, I mean, can you throw the spear? I could. No, okay, I got a question. Yes. And I figured it would be an action, but don't DM's discretion. Uh, would you count it as an action or a bonus action if I was to tie my holy symbol to my spear? I'll count that as a bonus action. All right, I'll do that as my bonus action. Okay. And, yeah. I'm going to yeet the spear. I like this idea. Adam. Roll that attack with advantage. Okay. Because I really like this idea. Oh, absolutely. You chuck that spear, and almost as if the holy symbol itself is causing it to track it. It is that little moment where you throw it. And it goes right through the specter. Please roll me that damage. All right. It into the uh, wall behind it. But it takes a nice chunk out of this. Hello? 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 There we go. Hello? Hello. Why, why is it not giving me my numbers? There we go. That's correct. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you, you chuck that spear. It goes right into or It goes right uh, through it. But it definitely has done a good a little chunk of damage to it. So uh, with that, Willow, it is your turn. I am going to stand over the corpse of the armor. Yep. Kind of kicking my boot at one of its legs to get it to move out of the way. <laughs> Across the clink, floor. Clink, 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 clink. Uh, I'm going to do a fancy. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll firebolt it. Yeah, all right. Throw uh, <laughs> throw me that attack roll. 13, that's going to be enough. Roll me damage. Great. <laughs> all right. You, you send that fireball, and it catches some of the ectoplasm of the specter, and the whole thing, for just a moment, goes up in a of flame, and it is gone. Rest in peace. Um, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, I won against the wall. <laughs> All right. <Over> here. <laughs> so you guys are out of combat. Um, <laughs> excited fireballing. I didn't mean to. Uh, Vol, when, uh, do you keep the little black hole up or do you take that down? I take that down. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cautiously retrieve my spear. <laughs> okay. Uh, Juliet, and uh, you see the books that were kind of floating all just kind of clatter to the floor <laughs> as the little black hole dissipates. Uh, okay. Thanks. Did the uh, wraith drop anything? No. No. The specter did not drop anything. Not specter. The ghost oh. doesn't have pockets. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anthrodax, the ghost is gone. You can come out, darling. I'm not going to completely get my shit wrecked by a ghost. No, it's it's gone. Uh, okay, I, I, I'm going to come out of the room now. <laughs> <laughs> I just hopped aboard the 
Nope, trying to fuck it though. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the infant now. That's right. And I cradle the in the baby a little bit. Okay. Can I move to where everyone else is? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um so in this bedroom, just real quick, uh it contains a large bed, two end tables, an empty wardrobe. A few of those books um, mounted on the wall next to the wardrobe is a full length mirror with an ornate wooden frame carved to look like ivy and ber uh, berries. Can I go up to that mirror and, and just take a look at it? Yeah. Um, can you roll me just a quick perception check as you're looking at that mirror? Jen, where are you? God, you're always the hardest to find. Hey. All right. So you kind of, you're looking at this mirror and looking at it and inspecting it. You do see uh, that there's eyeballs among the berries. And uh, you do actually see that the wall behind the mirror seems to have a secret door in it like you see the crack alongside the mirror everyone be wary yeah it seems it seems the, eye, the walls have eyes and i wish to take off the mirror slowly okay the wall uh, it's completely a attached to the wall, but as you kind of grab it, the door starts to open. Just cautiously look inside and venture. Okay. As you kind of look inside here, uh, you do see that there is a cobweb-filled wooden staircase going Why is it always the addicts? And at this point, I would like everybody to level up to level two. Hey, Congratulations. I thought you were going to say roll initiative again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, it. With the way that I do level ups, um, everybody here is going to essentially be getting the long rest. So, uh, Sorrow. You can get back that eight points of health that you lost. Uh, Thank God. So your maximum health goes back and then take that level up and everybody go back up to full health and full spell slots. How does are it count, doing... does it count as a little... Sorry. What's that? Okay. I was going to ask how we're doing health. Health? Uh, mm -hmm. You can either just take the average or roll for it level up <laughs> uh if you click so open your character sheet okay um and up in that top so right next to where it says barbarian one click that anvil and you can level okay. up so that way you'll be able to go into your um character mancer and kind of walk through those steps to level up to level two while you guys are doing that wait no i wanted to roll for it there we go oh awesome i hit the wrong button initially initially sorry <laughs> okay <sighs> so remember uh that is going to be your uh for your HP, that is going to be your what you roll here, or the average that you take, plus con. So uh, whatever your con modifier is, that's what you're going to add to it. All right. Do, do, do. As we're kind of going with this, uh, let's see. I am going to go send us on a little ad break here. Uh, cause we're actually about to hit that first little break 
And as we do hit that break, uh, I'm just going to kind of let everybody level up. But congratulations. Congratulations, everybody. You made it through the first half of Death House. You didn't die. Congrats. <laughs> Thoro almost died. <laughs> Wait, level I one. Went down. Yeah. Level one is always like one of the hardest levels because it, you will die so fucking fast. Yeah. Because everybody has like very low health. That eight damage is a ton of damage. For Willow, that is literally her entire life pull <laughs> at level one. So. If that would have been Willow failing that constitution save, that would have been an instant death. Uh. So, like, that's that's kind of, like, the worry, of course. Um, but yeah, so everybody uh, level up their characters. And uh, we're about to hit some ads here. I'm going to get some more coffee and run to the bathroom because uh, my ass has been up since fucking 2.45 in the morning. Mm. Oh my gods. <laughs> oh, also, uh, does this count as a long rest or is it just Yes, I'm counting I'm counting our level ups as long rests specifically. Mm. That way uh everybody is like when that level up happens, it is like a big momentous thing and it's the thing to help you keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's plenty <laughs> of opportunities just to die later. Don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the thanks for the message <laughs> as i put my server for the uh announcement she's going to torment us i mean guide us through the world <laughs> <laughs> don't <Shit>. die babe <laughs> don't die gods stop dying it's not healthy i'm not wrong though all right we will be back Welcome back, everybody. We uh, are, we look like we're all uh, ready and leveled up. Everybody looking uh, like their HP stat is nice and juicy in comparison to where they were. <laughs> and I just got back. <laughs> you just got back? The perfect yeah, timing. I spent all that time doing the session. I'm like, and now I finally can go to the bathroom. There we go. <laughs> perfect timing. Perfect timing. Mm hmm. Oh, wonderful, wonderful coffee. All right. Yeah. So uh, you do kind of see this just large uh, or not large, this very tiny web choked wooden staircase to the attic. All right. Just want to cautiously trying not to make a sound slowly go up the stairs okay mm -hmm. you see yourself on the right side of the map there all right peeking around the corner it goes up further uh-huh uh, anybody else doing anything during this Julia has the baby. Mm -hmm. Cautiously follow. And I yeah. can't. I can't open the door. There, there we go. go. All right. Uh, this bare hall is choked with dust and cobwebs. Can I call up after them? Yeah. Like, uh, y'all, shouldn't we be going down stairs to the basement? Not up. Okay, I guess we're doing this. Um, there, there aren't any stairs on the first floor. Going I'm down. I'm beginning to think maybe the basement was a ruse, and perhaps the attic might be where we should go. Mm. 
I, I didn't think they were looking. However, we've not found any stairs to prove that there is a basement. Do you follow as well, Anthrodex? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to uh, move y'all over here. So you all should be right over on this side of the map. All right. So yeah, uh, this large room in front of you, Willow, Knox. Uh, this is all just kind of bare with like a bunch of cobwebs and stuff. There's that uh, that window that kind of peeks out over the house that you can see there, Knox, that you're next to. And that's about it. Would I be able to tell how long it's been from how dusty it is? Mm. Give me a nature check. Either a, yeah, give me either a nature or an insight check. And this attic doesn't seem like it has been touched in ages. It's completely dusty. The cobwebs are overgrown. You'd actually have to kind of move them out of the way as you went into this room. The air is stale. And there's only a few doors up here. So whoever was using this in the house, it doesn't seem like they've come up here in a very, very long time. This, this hasn't been used in forever. I'm beginning to have doubts about these kids and their story. Yeah. Um, you think? I'm gonna... Oh, oops. Gonna... Go towards this middle door. This one? I'm going to just... This one right here. You put your hands on it and you realize that it is locked. Been up here for how how long? And it's locked? Okay. I travel down the hall. And this one, I assume, is already open? Mm-hmm. It seems to be a web-filled room that contains a just very slender bed, a nightstand, a rocking chair, an empty wardrobe, and a small iron stove. Mm. I don't see anything out of the ordinary in this room. No. The, It's just very old. It hasn't been touched in a long time. The stoves are cold to the touch. I give it a reluctant, suspicious look before just exiting. Okay. Hmm. This is another one? Yeah. I didn't mean to open. Did you open that? I think I opened that. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah good. I'm going... Uh, Nox is going to attempt to open the door. Okay. Click it. There you go. Uh, so yeah, this uh, is a dust-choked room. It contains a slender bed as well, a nightstand, a small iron stove, a writing desk with a stool. The wardrobe is empty. And there's a rocking chair with a layer, thick layer of dust. 
a smiling doll in a lacy yellow dress sits in the northern window box, and cobwebs drape it like a wedding veil. Is there anything on the writing desk? Just a, another... Papers or... No, it's completely empty. Proceeds to stare at the doll. <laughs> it stares back in the way that it's been doing the whole time since you walked in. It's completely inanimate. Um, you know, out of character, I hate the fact that you said that it's completely inanimate because I'm just like, is it though? <laughs> is it? I feel like that's what the fuck. The doll but, may but... be inanimate, but it's the magic and it's the evil magic within inanimate in character i don't know shit so of out of character yeah so for <laughs> this uh you guys have the door open here i'm gonna take a step inside okay the dusty chamber is packed with old furniture, chairs coat racks standing mirrors dress mannequins and the like all draped in dusty white sheets near an iron stove underneath one of the sheets is a wooden trunk. I wish to go to the trunk. Okay. I want to slide it out, and I want to see if I can open it. Yeah, it opens, and you do see tattered bed sheets stained with dried blood, and inside of it is the skeletal remains of someone. So, Mr. Fluffy, you remember when I w when you were saying about? Oh, wait, never mind. Never mind. Like, I can't call, call it mind. all the way. <laughs> Mr. Fluffy, <laughs> you remember when you remember when you were saying you were thinking those kids were lying? Um, I gesture over to the my uh, party members standing right at the door, like to kind of have them come in. Yeah, to uh, come and take a look at this. I don't think we should be here. At all. In the building. Not just on this floor. At all. Uh, hearing that... May I pop a divine sense? Okay. Uh, as you kind of use your divine sense... You just kind of feel like this whole place has a certain small stench of evil, like something had happened here. But you have no, like, direct sense of uh, anything within that, like, 60 feet other than, let's see... Yeah, okay. Other than through this door here, you feel the presence of undead. Make my way out. Come to the door. Lowen, you said this door was locked. It actually... That's right. The door itself is held shut with a padlock, very obviously from the outside locked. I might be able to unlock it. Not yet. Because I'm sensing something dark and sinister on the other side.
something that would encourage, or not encourage, but that may start another fight. Can I, like, use Danger Sense to back up what Vox, uh, what Nox is saying? Uh, Danger Sense specifically is for, like, if you have to roll a dexterity saving throw. Ah, uh, okay, I misunderstood. Yeah, you would just have advantage on that roll because you have oh. that, like, quick sense of, like, some impending danger of, like, something's going to happen. Okay, so would I be able to, like, I feel like I'd be able to hear things. I'm, I'm... Words. Words are failing me. That would probably be what a perception. Yeah, to try to hear things around here. Like, to hear anything that's going on. Yes. Speaking of that, I'm going to put my ear up to the door. Okay. See if I can hear anything on the other side. Both of me, Both of you give me perception checks. Do a second sniffer. Sniffer. Uh, Sniffer. let me, I gotta reload. Okay. Oh, did it go through? Yeah, it went through. Okay. Does that work? Uh, so an 18 and a 19. Uh, you both are over here trying to hear out, uh, anything up here in the attic. And you don't immediately really hear hold on, anything of note. The air is still, and the only thing you hear is the breathing of you and your companions. Hmm. I'd like to start making my way towards this door. If that's oh, if that's okay with everyone else. Towards where? Mm -hmm. Towards the door that they're uh, currently listening towards. With the padlock? Um, okay. Yeah. Is there any writing on the door? No. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna back up a little bit. Watch watch them just uh, investigate the store. Stand by. Okay. Um, on a not-so-bright note, uh, if there are, in fact, beings on the other side of that door, they should know that we are here, since we're not exactly being the quietest. So, if you don't mind moving, Nox, I can unlock it and we can see what's going on. I'm not sure if we want to go in there just yet. I, I was... Sorry. Because I guarantee you whatever is on the other side of this door is not going to be the friendliest of sorts. I am with Nox on this. I do not think we should open that door. I didn't say open the door, period. Just not yet. And wait Unless for we're... what? I'm just going to stare at Wolven before turning the other two. I think we should investigate the rest of the place. See if there's anything else. I agree with Knox. Alright. Oh, well. Then. Just so just sulking off down this down the stairs. Hmm? Okay. Well, 
And what else do we need to investigate? Probably in the oh. lower floors. Well, I, I know I haven't gone into these other rooms. But... We should at least, you know, explore the rest of the area first. I, for one, really don't think we should go into this particular room and disturb whatever's in there. We've already been attacked by living armor and a ghost. I really don't want to get my shit wrecked by another being that should not be moving. Wisdom saving throws, everyone. Wow. For Dex. Yes. The sky cracks and thunder streaks across the sky. And for a moment, Juliet looks like the specter that was haunting you all. How dare you? <laughs> How fucking dare you for starters. Um my ears pen back, kind of like a an animal that's been cornered. And out of instinct I just kind of grab my tail and I start backing away slowly. You just hear these little whimpers and chirps from me. They're very animalistic. They're just little <sighs> no, 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 <laughs> as I'm backing away. All right. Do, do, do. Okay, yeah, you do see her kind of uh, freaking out a bit as uh, this is all kind of going on. The very the light that was here in this room seems to darken all around you. You lose a little bit of that wonderful light. As it all seems to just go away. So, with that, ah, oh, light, fantastic. Okay, let's add a light to your character then. Uh, it and is Nox is also going to pull out his lamp. Okay, I believe you still have that going from your character right now. Uh, I'm not seeing green. Not the other. Yeah, you do. You you do have your your green. It must be on your. I see normal light, but yeah. Because before messing with it, you made it green, like it was a green. Here, like it should be. Yeah, the green that you see oh. in front of you. Oh, okay. It is green. It just doesn't didn't look green beforehand. Okay, and then the light appears in Willow's hand. But while this is going on... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, there we go. And your mind kind of 
wobbles. Can you give me a D one hundred roll? Anthrodex. Yes. All right. So your posture kind of crumbles as you try and make sense of this weird shift in reality. <laughs> Give me a d10 roll. Okay. okay. Oh, fuck. So you become incredibly skittish. When you're the target of an attack or an effect that requires you to make a dexterity saving throw, you can use your reaction to begin moving evasively, gaining plus one bonus to AC, and that advantage on dexterity saving throws, which you already have, until the start of your next turn. You have gained your first short-term madness. So for that, I believe, let's see. How long does this last? Roll me a d4. For the next four minutes, this entire bit messes with your mind, and you are incredibly skittish. So that is what happened here. <laughs> okay. So the lights go out. Anthrodex freaks out. You're kind of like shaking, looking to the side and side. But you guys are all still in this room as the light starts to come back out from the overcast skies. Oh, I, that was muted. I'm sorry. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Do I notice... Um, Anthrodax. Oh yeah, the, it, the the lightning strikes and they look at you like you are the most terrifying thing in the world, and they back up a little bit before they hit the wall. Okay. Can I say anything? Yeah. This sounds like a terrible idea, but. Uh, scales? You okay? All you hear from Anthrodex is just little chirps and squeaks. They're completely terrified. <laughs> no, my heart. <laughs> um, and you notice that in their hand, they just have the tip of their tail. They're holding it to their chest. Their ears are pinned back, and there's just this glassy look of fear in their crystalline blue eyes. I get the feeling the dragon doesn't like thunder. Uh, yeah, I guess. Really, not like it. Uh, we're heading down now, right? Any response? 
just more little chirps and squeaks and <laughs> everybody else just completely silent as we're heading down, right? <laughs> we're heading well, down, right? <laughs> are... It's a legit question, I think. I'm gonna make my way between the two and kind of get in front of uh Arthodex. Are you okay? It's just thunder. That's kind of the noises they're making. Which is a big fat no, they are not okay. Grab her by her shoulders the best I can. Kind of shake her a little bit. Hey. It's okay. There's no words coming from Anthrodex. They're just chirping and squeaking and just kind of cowering at this point. This big six foot and some change tall dragonborn just kind of hunched over, just hugging their tail for dear life. Ian, yeah, question. May I do a non lethal unarmed strike? to snap her out of it in attempts to snap her out of it like like kind of slap her to like snap her yeah. out of it then slap yeah. them out of it yep all right sure go ahead uh I don't have roll me roll me a attack roll so d20 uh plus your strength uh, be it eight no you you like yeah. ta you like you tap them uh on the face and like as you're going to like tap them they they kind of like flinch back away from you oh as if smacking someone's gonna help move Kind of shoulder my five foot self in between <laughs> Nox and Anthrodex and like, like, put my hands out, like, not touching because they're obviously terrified. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, Anthrodex just kind of hissed at Nox as Nox slapped the shit out of them. Well, went to slap at you, they didn't hit you. Ah, okay. Was confuzzled. It it was the hiss that made Nox miss. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just looking at the scene, shaking my head as I'm making my way down the stairs. Anthrax, can you do me a favor and just breathe in with me? I'm gonna try and like walk them through, like, breathing and try and calm them down that way. Okay. Um, give me another wisdom saving throw, Anthrodex. Okay. Eh. Where are you, wisdom save? There you are. Boop. You kind of start cal calming them down, but it does not affect their actual madness. So they're still very skittish, but able to talk. The little chirps kind of subside for a moment, and Anthrodex, all they can say is Wraith over and over again. Just Wraith, Wraith. There's nothing here. There's nothing here. It's okay. It's okay. It's just us. Just us and the baby. It's okay. We're okay. All right. Can I try to go by? 
Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Volwyn, have you already gone like all the way down the stairs, or are you just kind of like waiting for them to catch up? Oh, I'm going. I'm going down the stairs. Um, I I can't move my pog. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to. I just wanted to make sure, so you can kind of go yeah, yeah. and start exploring. Yeah, just just trudging down the stairs, heavy heavy footed, just just mumbling to myself. Uh, gotta explore. Gotta explore the entire place, they said. And gotta look for the basement, they said. Just going going down to the first floor, and I'm gonna start looking for this basement. Okay. I, f I forget which one is the first floor. Boop. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna start dragging you all the way to the first floor. And boop. So you're gonna be all the way down here. And uh, did just, it make things worse? Just to kind of remind you, there was this. Uh, there's a kitchen here. Uh, you guys went through the dining room. There's this uh, small uh, closet nobody looked into, and then there was the like hunting room, and that was kind of everything you you were able to kind of see. Mm -hmm. All right gonna make my way into the kitchen is there anything i see out of the ordinary uh nothing out of the ordinary there's the dumb waiter that's about right here that seems to go only up from here and then of course there was the uh fully stocked cupboard hmm. go to the fully stocked cupboard okay is there anything of use there um, like all of the food here does appear to be, you know, fresh. So there's like, uh, some apples, flour, uh, kind of a bunch of your basics that would be kind of around here. I'm taking them apples. Okay. <laughs> Honey crisp are in season and it is spook. It is spooky day. It is spooky day. Yeah. <laughs> Do you eat one or do you just take one? No, I take them all. Oh, okay. So you, you grab about uh, half a dozen apples and put them in your pack. All, all right. right. But that's about, you know, other than some other essentials and stuff like that, uh, things that you'd be able to cook with but nothing super easy to grab. So those are all uh, kind of in here. That's about all you could really see. All right. And let's see. I don't see any sort of any sort of way down from. No. From what I see. Uh, and what you what you remember from your first kind of run through around here, you haven't, you didn't really find any way down either. Am I able to like for sure know if there's no uh, way down through the fact that there's a done way or that doesn't go down right here? Yeah, so like uh, you could use uh, the like pulley system to kind of pull it up, and you do see it's just yeah. a flat stone. Like, this is where it lands. This is the very bottom of the dumbwaiter. All right. I wish to just start making my way to the second level then. Okay. Rumbling. Kids talking. Kids talking about. Kids talking about a basement. I doubt there's even any parents here. Uh, other than that, back to the rest of the party. Yeah. Uh, as Anthrodex starts to try to calm down and as willow's trying to calm and threat down uh what are we doing for the rest of the party here i snuck around okay are you going back down yeah okay i'm wondering if that made things worse <laughs> so you can make yourself your way down you're back over on the third floor now No spooky scaries. 
Lots of spookies. No spooky scary. So you're back down into you still have the the bundled up uh the bundle that you had, the child bundle that you had earlier, still in your yeah. arms as you go back into uh what is seemingly like the, the servant's room or the nanny's room or the nursemaid's room. Um let's go find the one. Okay. Uh, he definitely seemed like he just kind of went off, so uh, you do hear him kind of stomping about on the second floor right now. Okay. Let's go down to the second. All right. You guys both meet down on the second floor. There you are. You find anything? That was towards you, Volwin. Volwin, you're on stage. I, I unmuted. I, <laughs> you're, you're, I didn't, you're, uh... you're, you're muted. Volwin, you're muted. The only thing I found downstairs was a lack of a basement. Kids were lying. All right, then. Um, hmm. Unless the first floor is considered their basement. Y'all checked everywhere, right? Checked up and down. The Dunware doesn't even go any lower. Hmm. So... Uh, you haven't gone into this room. I don't know if... I know this door mm. was opened. I don't believe anyone went to this room. No, I yeah. have a habit of accidentally clicking on doors. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, be careful. I go, oh, what's this? <laughs> and <you> click. <laughs> click, 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 click. Mm. So, yeah, this, this door is opened, um, but nobody actually went into this room. Take a step inside. Okay. Just take a little peek around. All right. What do we see? Well, red velvet drapes cover oh. the windows of this room in the back here. Mm -hmm. uh, an exquisite mahogany desk and matching high back chair face the entrance and the fireplace, above which hangs a framed framed picture of a windmill perched atop a rocky crag. Situated in the corners of the room are two overstuffed chairs. Floor-to-ceiling bookshelves line the south wall, and a rolling wooden ladder allows one to more easily reach the high shelves. The desk has several items resting atop it. There's an oil lamp, a jar of ink, a quill pen, a tender box, and a letter containing a red wax candle. Or a letter kit containing a red wax candle, four blank sheets of parchment, a wooden seal bearing a woodmill insignia. And that is about it for now. There are some drawers here as well. All right. Let's see. Am I able to tell the significance of this uh, windmill stamp in relation to the family? Like, do I know if it's like a, of a higher class? Uh, that definitely seems like this is some sort of like higher class family. All right. I want to go through those drawers. Okay. You open the drawers and it is completely empty except for one. That contains an iron key. Well, I think I found out how to get into that room upstairs. I'm talking to, uh, Willow? Juliet. Oh, Juliet. Juliet. I'm talking to Juliet. Me! Mm -hmm. I just uh, jangle the single key in my palm. Jingle, jingle. Uh, 
Sure, we can go back upstairs. Scales was kind of skittish, though. So I'm gonna, no more thunder. I'm gonna, I'm gonna toss you the key. There's one more thing I want to check out here before we go. Okay, I somehow miraculously catch this key because I'm not coordinated. <laughs> you also have both hands full, but you kind of just like catch it in between your arm that is holding your mace and like your chest. Yeah. And before we go into what Volwin wants to check out, we're going to take one more break. Mm -hmm. See you right after these ads. All right. Uh, I'm going to drop us into that good old beat. Is there anything of note? Oh, you see, as you kind of scroll through, this library is filled with hundreds of tomes. You have history, warfare, alchemy. Several of these shelves are containing first edition collected works of poetry and fiction. Mm -hmm. These shelves seem like they are worth their weight in gold. But please, give me a perception check while you're looking through. Mm -hmm. As you're kind of going down, you're like, oh, wow. Butternuts, bottle beer, bombrati. Wow. Some of these are absolutely high class. And then there is a single black book that cover or that catches your eye. Nothing on the spine. I want to go over to that one and I want to pick it up and page through it this red covered book with the black spine as you go to pick it up it is actually a switch and you pull it and the door that is hiding behind opens the bookcase slides hmm. well that's a first. Never been in someone's house rich enough to afford something like this. What was that? Oh, just a secret passageway. I knew it. I, w I also wish to pocket like like three of three of the books at random. Some okay. of the, well, three of the first edition books at random. You you quickly pocket a couple of the first edition books, and the door slides close. Oh, son of a! <laughs> I put What'd y'all do? In, I put them back in their place slowly. Nothing happens. Dude, they're they're back. Can I pull the the one book again? Yep. The switch. And the switch <laughs> opens again. Okay, hurry, hurry, hurry. I just oh. hurry into the room. Okay. Yep, hurry into the room. And you both go in. Okay. I... Mm -mm. Yes. Uh, what do we see? The secret room contains bookshelves that are packed with tomes. Each describing different, like each inscribed with this gold and black lettering, red covers. You have fiend summoning, necromantic rituals. One, these are all from a cult that seems to be the priests of Osibis. Do I know anything of the priests of Osibis? Or do I? Both give me history checks. <laughs> Nothing. 
the door closes. You both well, do not know about this cult. This is not something outside of this realm you have found yourself in. Oops, sorry. Am I able, amongst all of these dark tones, am I able to feel anything like out of, out of the ordinary for these kinds of subjects? Something that doesn't fit in. Uh, you're kind of looking through them. I do also want to point out there is a heavy wooden chest with clawed iron feet that stands against the south wall. Its lid is only half closed, and sticking out of the chest is a skeleton in leather armor. Clutched in the skeleton's left hand is a letter bearing a seal. Is it the same seal as the one on the desk? No. This is a completely different seal. This is the seal of Strahd von Zarevich. I crouched down and eyeing that chest, cautiously take the letter out of the skeleton's hands. Okay. Within the letter itself, if you open to read it, yeah, is a flowing script, and it reads as follows. My most pathetic servant, I am not a messiah sent to you by the dark powers of this land. I have not come to lead you on the path to immortality. However many souls you have bled on your hidden altar, however, however many visitors you have tortured in your dungeon, know that you are not the ones who brought me to this beautiful land. You are but worms writhing in my earth. You say that you are cursed, your fortunes spent. Your abandoned love for madness took solace in the bosom of another woman and sired a stillborn son. Cursed by darkness, of that I have no doubt. Save you from your wretchedness? I think not. I much prefer you as you are. Your dread lord and master, Strahd von Zarevich. Oh no! As I'm as I'm reading this, I uh, back up into the door, not knowing it's closed yet, and I just try fingering the uh, the the edges, trying to get out, push it out. Okay. Does it open? Yeah, you're able to uh, find kind of the switch on this side and open the door. We need to get out of here. I and agree. Get... Right, get the. We must get. We must go get the others. I, w I wish to make my way back up to the the attic. Okay. Uh, does, you guys don't check within the uh, treasure chest at all? Just grab the letter, read it, and run? I don't trust that chest. It's, sc <laughs> it's screaming mimic. The letter was spooky. So no. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, nice. okay. But here's the thing. Is that is that Neko saying it's screaming mimic, or is it Volwin saying it's screaming mi mimic? Out of character, it's screaming mimic. <gasps> Okay. Okay. That's then what would Volwin do? What would Volwin do? There is potentially treasure in that chest. You're right. You there know was, what you must do. There was a skeleton sticking out of it. Leather armor on the body. Uh, you're right. <laughs> I should go back in. 
It I'll looks. Search the chest. <laughs> okay. Are y'all serious? <laughs> I mean, they got a point, though. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, try to keep your keep your mind in the uh, role of your character, uh, and try not to meta game, because it is much more interesting when it's coming from your character and your character's own deeds here. Um, as you kind of take a closer look at this treasure chest, uh, you do see that the skeleton itself had been hit with poison darts as if it had like went to go steal from this and they activated the trap within. Is there, through the cracks, am I able to see, like, anything laying down on the bottom of the chest? Yeah. You actually do see inside of it. Uh, there's a couple of uh, black leather-covered books. A couple of scrolls. Hmm. All right. Let's see. Do I have it? Do I have it? I wish, I want to prop open this chest a little bit more by placing the apples towards the hinges okay. to support it. And I want to move the skeleton aside and grab the books. Okay. Yeah, you just slightly prop it open. Uh, it is very obvious the trap has been already spent within this. Uh, as you do so, you grab the books quickly, uh, and just a couple of scrolls and pieces of paper are down at the bottom as well. All right, let me just add those to the inventory. Each of those uh, black leather books are completely blank and worth 25 gold piece each. How many are there? Uh, three. And then there oh, are three scroll or three blank or three of those blank books, and then three scrolls, um, that are kind of wrapped with a uh, blue silk ribbon, and then two more scrolls that are wrapped with red ribbon and stamped with that windmill stamp. There are three more scrolls that are stamped with the windmill stamp. All right. Go three. And you said two in blue, in blue silk? Uh, three in blue silk. A three in blue silk. Okay. So inspecting I... the three with red gives you three different spell scrolls. Bless, protection of poison, and spiritual weapon. Answer. And the ones in blue silk appear to be a deed to the house, a deed to a windmill, and a signed will. All right. <clears throat> there we go. As I'm uh, stuffing these in my bag, I look I look back at the at the skeleton partially in the in the chest. <laughs> Poor fool. And I make my way out. Alright. Yeah. There you go. You gained some books, some spells, and what appears to be the will and deeds to the people who were living here prior. Mm -hmm. If they are still alive. Uh, 
back up on the third floor or on the in the attic sorry back up in the attic and through decks the four minutes has kind of passed and you're able to kind of fully calm down and the madness has faded i had something that i wanted to do okay please and um, in order to try and calm Anthrodax down, Willow started humming a uh, uh, tune. I don't really like the tune per se, but like. She, she's just like humming to them and trying to soothe. That's it. So. Okay. So just a nice, light. Oops. I broke it. Help. Help. Where Help. did you how did you break? Where did you go? <laughs> Hold on, where did you go? <laughs> did you delete yourself? Yes. Oh. Help. <laughs> Rip. There you go. <laughs> I was like, did you delete Airplay. yourself? Hold up a sec. Hold up. <laughs> um, also, I, I still have glow. I still have light. Because that's for another probably 56 minutes. Yeah, that, that one goes for a good while. You know, that's like an hour. Yeah, so if it's been four minutes, then it's got boop. Uh, 20 feet, 20 feet, click, save. There you I go. was gonna, I was gonna hum something to simulate that, but at the same time, I'm like, wait, I can't hum what I usually used a calm rider down when he was little because it was hoist the colors. <laughs> that would calm my son down. That's actually kind of wow. awesome. Would I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Would not calm down this dragon, but my fears watch. <laughs> oh, it's a pirate's life for you. Actually, funny. I do think that would that that would be amazing to hear you hum at some point. Keep that in your back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> do you I don't have pockets. Ah, oh, shit. What are you wearing? Girl pants? No, this Where? is olden days. Everybody has pockets. Fuck you. <laughs> Oh, ah! yes, but women's pants have barely any pockets. No, olden days, no, no, no. everybody had we're pockets. Not <laughs> we're, we're not in the modern day yet. Where nobody has, no women have pockets. <laughs> no, we're, we're back in the olden days where women had big ass pockets so they could put rocks and shit in. They could hold a whole ass loaf of bread? Yeah. Gib. Yeah, like, <laughs> well, just, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, Coming back into so yeah. character as uh, I'm as I'm being hummed to. I I sit there for a minute and I just take a a big breath in, and as I open my eyes, it, it's apparent that sanity's starting to slip its way back in. My ears perk back up. I kind of take a look around. It's like the fuck? Why am I holding my tail? What the fuck happened? Ah, there they are. I'm a pet. Anthrodax on the snout and be like, all right, let's go join the rest of the party. Uh, kind of lost you there for a minute. Welcome back. I, I have questions. Like, the fuck happened? Why why am I holding my tail? What scared me so bad? I don't I don't remember the last four minutes. You, I, I, darling, I, I hate to break it to you, but I think you're scared of, of thunder. Yeah. I, I used to never be afraid of thunder. Oh. Huh. The fuck is this place doing to us? Well, I'd rather not stick around and find out. Let's let's get back downstairs. Agreed. Let's follow the party. Okay. Um. Everybody else, or Volwyn and Juliet, you guys were going back upstairs, right? With yeah. the key. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We getting our steps in today. You guys actually. Yeah all seem to meet back in that room once more with the uh, secret door going up to the attic. 
as Volwyn and Juliet come up, and Anthrodex, Knox, and Willow come down. Uh, Anthrax is back to their senses. Wait, we have to wander off to. Went to the first floor to see if there is actually a basement. Turns out, very much no. That oh, is the very last. And we found a key. Hold a, a key? key? The key to the room that I very much do not want to go in. Uh, uh, Grumbar only hmm. knows where those keys goes. Only one way to find out. Well, if you two have searched the house, I suppose it's the only room left now. That's right. It's the only one left, and it's the only one that's locked. And there's only one key. Oh, I did say I could unlock it. Also fair. Willow, at that point, goes upstairs, followed by Volwyn and Knox. Juliet? Does Anthrodex follow? Very, very reluctantly. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Bless. Good. Okay. Uh, let me just pull Wait, that was a sneeze? What are you talking about? Uh, what was that? I was giggling, sorry. <laughs> oh, you're fine, you're fine. <laughs> you're allowed to giggle out loud, it's fine. What are we? Professional actors or something? Pfft. We just play, we play silly little people online. That's fine. Giggling in straw? <gasps> More likely than you think. <laughs> Giggling in, in a game like this? What? Who thought horror and comedy and tragedy and comedy went well together? Looks you at... already broke the dragon once. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You all kind of come back up here. Um, Volwyn's kind of... Uh, Volwyn still has the key. I toss it to, um... Oh, you, never mind. Uh, Juliet right. has the key. Juliet yeah, has I... the key. And the baby bundle still. Yes. Her hands are full, so I can take the key to unlock the door. Okay. Give the key. Curious, has the baby, like, made any noises or anything? It's just been quiet. It's been yeah. quiet the whole time. Yeah, I don't like that. Okay, you can open the door now if you like, as you unlock it. Click, 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 click. Ah, okay, thanks. Oh, okay. It and it worked. Oh. I think it was because you were clicking on your token, maybe. That might have been yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Inside the room. Here we go. The room contains a bricked-up window flanked by two dusty wood-framed beds sized for children. Closer to the door is a toy chest with windmills painted on its side and a dollhouse that's a perfect replica of the dreary edifice in which you stand. These furnishes are draped in cobwebs, and lying in the middle of the floor are two small skeletons wearing tattered but familiar clothing. Uh. The smaller of the two cradles a stuffed doll that you also recognize. The Durst children Rose and Thorn, neglected and locked in their room until they starved to death. 
And that is where we stop tonight. Mm-hmm. God damn it. <laughs> Sorry, I did cool, did cool <sighs> the as, soon as, as soon as we opened the door and saw, I was like, don't fucking tell me. Don't fucking don't tell do me. This. Don't do this. <laughs> Upset dragon noises. Happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs> Sora. Your butt. <laughs> I like a good cliffhanger. I'm not gonna lie. Oh. So. Thank you once again, everybody. Um, it was an absolute blast to be able to play on Halloween night with you guys. And I am <laughs> so, so very happy to keep this, uh, this game rolling. Thank you to uh, Kick Squirrel In and Charles Okuna for the Prime subscriptions today. And thank you, Red Guy, for that wonderful D&D bane. That was fun. Thank you, KG mm -hmm. and Kick Squirrel in as well for the follow. Uh, Z, I would like you to take it away with who we are raiding today. A Beagle. What was that? A B. Oh, okay. Apocalyptic Bunny. Da bang. The bunge. All right. Uh, let's see. Where is our? Yeah, that reminds me. Yes. Um, you said once we reach the end of this house, we level up to level three. Yes. Or is that, or is that after we get out? After you get out. Mm. But there is still quite a bit that you guys are missing here. Uh, so. Uh, yeah. We will be uh, continuing with this house next week. And uh, we are going to go say hi to Apocalyptic Bunny, a very, very wonderful friend of ours. Uh, they are streaming Monster Hunter Wilds, the, uh, new, new yeah, it's a very new one, and it is in, I believe, beta right now, so that is pretty yes. awesome. You can, anyone can access the playtest, I believe, via the Steam page, just click the join, and you can, this morning you could create a character, now you should be able to play it fully. Yeah, and, uh. Of course, next week we will be live once again at 8.30 Central Time, 9.30 Eastern. We are doing more Dice of the Damned. As you guys get to inspect this room with the bones of Rose and the Thorn. But seriously, thank you, thank you so much. You guys are absolutely wonderful players, and this is a fantastic group to keep playing with. This is by far one of my favorite campaigns to be able to run, and I'm stupid excited to. So glad to be part of it. Hell yeah. Yeah. 